All right, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today I'm just going to give you an update on the aquaponics system, talk a little bit about water testing, and some of the other kind of strange things that we've got going on in the aquaponics system today. Okay, so one of the things that I like to do from time to time is do a full uh, test on, uh, on the water here in the system. I don't do this very often. I mainly do the full range test when, uh, if I've made any major adjustments to the system, for instance, when I changed out a lot of my grow media and put the new river or the new uh, uh, rock in here. Um, you know, if you're doing any big water changes or anything else, if you see any problems with fish obviously dying or uh, looking unhealthy, water color changing rapidly, uh, also maybe plant growth stunted or you know other coloring problems and issues. That's really the main reason I'm doing this today is I'm still noticing some nutrient deficiencies in some of my plants and so I'm trying to kind of narrow in on what it is and I wanted to make sure that we had a good level of nitrates in the system. So um, I'm using a standard API Freshwater Master test kit. I've talked about this briefly uh, almost a year ago. And the test kit that I'm using is basically just this here. It comes with all the different test uh, bottles and solutions. I think this was like 30 bucks for this test kit. It's been an amaz amazing investment. You know, I've used this uh, a lot throughout the last year. So if you're looking at starting a system or you don't have one of these, I would definitely recommend that, uh, that little test kit. And as always, I'll have a link to it in the description. Um, just going kind of right to left here on the test that I have done. And I've done this about an hour and a half after I fed the fish. Um, sometimes rate, you know, um, within a half an hour, an hour of feeding your fish, you'll notice some changes in the ammonia and nitrate levels. So I would recommend if you're doing a test to wait at least an hour to two hours after you feed the fish to get an accurate level of what the system's at for the majority of the day. Um, so on the right here, I have the nitrate, or sorry, nitrate levels, the NO3. And this is, as you can see, kind of a dark red, which puts me between like the 80 and 160 mark here, um, which is a, that's, that's good. Um, the more nitrates in the system, uh, the more, you know, are available to the plants, obviously, the more growth you're going to get. That's obviously a very important uh, uh, compound for the uh, plants to grow. Most important in leafy growth and stuff like that. So um, I've got plenty of nitrates in the system, and that's a good thing. Uh, going to the next uh, test here, I've got nitrite, NO2, and uh, as you can see here, the color chart on this one, this one matches up pretty much with zero, um, and that's where you want the nitrites to be as well. You, you know, if your bacteria are working efficiently in the system, as soon as you feed the fish and, and uh, you know, throughout the day, the ammonia that the fish are producing should immediately be transferred into nitrites and then into nitrates should happen very quickly if your system's working optimally so you want that to be at zero same thing with ammonia i've got the test here that says i'm pretty much at zero for my ammonia which is awesome uh, that's again these the ammonia and nitrates are kind of toxic chemicals for our fish so we want to get those transferred and, and converted into nitrate as soon as we can so this is a, an example of you know what I would consider a healthy bacteria colony and a healthy system this is what you want um, when you're first starting your system out you might notice you get ammonia spikes for a while and then you get nitrate spikes for a while and then once things settle in and you've got a good colony of bacteria growing in the system you should be at zero ammonia zero nitrate and then you should have a decent level of nitrates um, if you overplant and you have too many plants in the system, those nitrates will get used up quickly and you'll end up you know, at zero. Maybe if you test 10 hours after you feed the fish, uh, you may end up with uh, you know, all your nitrates are used up. Um, in my case, I've got enough, probably too much nitrate in the system. I could probably plant a lot more in here. So um, also the, the last test here is pH test and there's two different ranges of pH, high and low. Um, I'm finally into the low range pH, which uh, if you've watched my other videos and seen kind of the struggles I've gone through with pH, you'll, you'll know why I say that. But um, I'm finally getting the system down into a range where 
Uh, I've got the carbonates in the system under control for my hard water. I'm now using filtered water, uh, which has dramatically decreased the amount of carbonates or carbonate hardness of the water itself, which is great for my pH levels. Um, the bacteria counties have, have now kind of been very well established on the new grow media I put in a few months ago. And so the pH is slowly coming down uh, from where it was at 8.2. And now I'm looking at probably, uh, it looks like somewhere in the 7.2 range, maybe a little bit above that. Uh, this test kit, one of the things I didn't like about the low range pH is, you know, a lot of these colors are real close together here. It's real hard to tell 6.6 .6 from 6.8 .8 from 7. So, you know, if you really wanted an accurate, accurate reading of your pH, I would recommend one of those electronic ones, but they're a little bit more expensive. So um, this will work to get a general reading though. And this just tells me that I'm still coming down. At least I know I'm, I'm not in this range uh, and I'm, I'm into the low range here, which is where I want to be. So pH is looking pretty, pretty good here. Still need to come down a little further. I'd like to get that into the 6.8 to 7 range consistently. I am still adding a little bit of vinegar every couple days. I'll come down and add a few tablespoons of vinegar to the system uh, just to kind of help burn up some of that uh, carbonate hardness in the water that I'm still uh, still have a little bit of. So um, that's helping me to, to kind of edge the pH down a little slower. Uh, if you're going to do anything like that in your system, you know, you want to be really slow with it. If you put too much acid in the system, you'll spike your pH down real low and then you can end up killing a lot of the bacteria colony and then all kinds of other things go bad. So. Um, I've been real, real careful and slow with any pH drops that I've done. Okay, so just to kind of do an update on the system and show you some of the changes we're about to make and how the girls has been doing and some of the, the strange things we've got going on down here in the aquaponics system. Uh, this is uh, grow bed number one, which is the spinach grow bed. I've not been real happy with the growth on the spinach. Uh, this has been in here. You know, same time I planted uh, the tomato plants are very close to the same time. And you can see the growth on all my little spinach plants down here versus the growth on my tomato plants in this bed. So there's definitely something going on. The spinach, either it's lighting, it could be nutrients, it could be pH, it could be the, uh, you know, water uh, um, cycle I have in this grow bed. Maybe I need to adjust it. Um, I've also, it's been suggested that we may have a spider mite issue, uh, and this does look a whole lot like spider mite damage. The spider mites will get on the bottom of the leaf and they'll kind of suck the juices out of the leaf, and that's definitely an issue you can have in indoor gardening. Um, I have really never had an issue with it before. I have a lot of ladybugs in the system that we bring down here in the fall time when they start to try to find a warm place to live before winter. And we'll find them throughout the house, kind of on the windowsills and stuff like that, and just keep bringing a bunch of them down here. These are natural predators of spider mites, and I see them cruise around on all the leaves. I've got a bunch of, uh, I don't know if I can find any more of them right now. I guess there's one hanging out in there. Uh, but there, there's a bunch of them in here, and they they just cruise around on the leaves all day long and, and eat up those spider mites. So I don't see... I, I've not been able to find any spider mites. I've looked with magnifying glasses and taken pictures of the back of the leaves and zoomed in and I, I can't, I, I've seen some little white dots, I'm not sure. So I just, I can't verify that that's an issue. Um, I think there, that could be an issue, but there's also something else going on that they're not growing very well. So what I'm gonna do is replace the spinach with kale. Um, I had kale in here before, it grew really well. Um, I, I, we're, we found some recipes and other things we're gonna start using the kale more for. And so I think it's, I think it's probably the best thing for me to do. So I'm gonna go with a, a different leafy green in here. Um, I've got uh, my little reusable containers here full of seeds, uh, kale seeds. And so once those get sprouted up and get big enough, I'll start to pop those in. I'm also just cloning some extra tomato plants here. Um, I've got some cuttings off of those dwarf Roma tomatoes, and I have one extra spot I was trying to fill in that grow bed, and so I was just gonna try to clone here. Um, I don't use any root hormone or anything like that. I've just stuck these, cut, took, cut these branches off and stuck them in the soil. Um, I've had about a uh, probably one in three success rate on doing it this way. I'm not a huge fan of the root hormones and stuff, so. Uh, you know, I have no shortage of tomato branch cuttings that I can take, so and I'm not in a hurry. So I'll just keep trying that until it works. I did try one uh, in the, just sticking a, a branch right in the aquaponic system from the tomato plant, and I did not have luck with that. Uh, not to say that I couldn't try it a couple more times and maybe get one to work, but I pulled it out and it didn't have any signs of any root growth. So um, I think it needs the soil and that 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 moisture 
pressed right up against that stem in order to get the uh, roots to start growing. So we'll see how that works. Um, just to show you the rest of the, oh, before I do that, the other thing that we have going on in here that's kind of strange is we've introduced some butterflies. And you might be asking, why did you put butterflies in here? And that is a darn good question. Uh, this Christmas we bought some live butterflies. We have a little butterfly habitat for the kids. And they uh, got to watch the whole process of them turning from caterpillars into chrysalids and uh, hatching out and, and uh, turning into butterflies. It was pretty cool. They actually have a video on that over on the SSL Kids channel. I'll put a link at the end here. And I um, had a lot of fun with it. So we needed a place to release them and kind of planned on releasing them down here. I've got a, a couple little butterflies in here. Uh, I've got five, actually five of them. And they just kind of hang out and sun themselves. And that's why we have the kiwi in here. They suck the, the sugars off the fruit and um, they've been, uh, been been doing fine down here. Now I realize that they may breed and you know we may end up with a bunch of caterpillars eating everything down here. Um, if that's the case we'll have to kind of deal with that when it comes. Um, we'll uh, you know just pull the caterpillars off and, and deal with them as we need to uh, if that's the case if, if they do actually end up uh, you know breeding down here. So we'll, we'll kind of see how it works out and I'll take you along on that if it turns into a catastrophe. Uh, at least it'll make for good videos, right? So the kids love it, and it's kind of neat to come down here, and they'll jump on your finger, and you can kind of hold them. And um, I don't know if I can get one to. No, nope, he's not going to hang out with me today. But uh, the kids come down here, and they'll hold them and, and look at them, and it's been fun. So um, anyway, so that's what's going on in this grow bed. Um, but moving on here, I've got the, the bell peppers, and everything's been growing very, very well with these. I've got a, a few little banana peppers as well. Uh, these plants have been flowering and growing just really, really well. The leaves are nice and green and, and, and glossy and um, just doing real good. Uh, flowering like crazy and I've got a lot of peppers that are setting in here. A lot of little ones. Um, and it looks like I've got a few box elder bugs. They don't really do any good for anything, but uh, they always end up down here, so I just leave them. <laughs> but um, this is the, the kind of the big producer right now. Um, get into focus here. This uh, is the oldest bell pepper plant that is one single plant that you're seeing there and then there's one other little tiny one down here that's not doing too much but this one I've got some really big fruit on uh, bell peppers which are just awesome and it is just loaded there's some more ladybugs hanging out in there eating something hopefully they also help pollinate so but uh, just loaded with peppers on this one I've never had this this one do so well uh, this bell pepper plant there's no ladybug up there and uh, it's just loaded just loaded with peppers, and I've never had them get the peppers get this big. So that tells me that things are going well. It's rooted in good. It's getting all the nutrients it needs, and um, really, really doing good. So that one's going to be a big producer for us. The beans here have been doing awesome. I've they've went through a whole cycle, and I've picked all the beans off of these, and uh, they uh, stopped flowering for about a week, and now they've started to burst back into flower. You can see the little beans if it'll ever focus for me. Little beans coming in everywhere. And uh, that'll be a lot of fun. These uh, these things will just keep producing for us. So I've actually got another little one that I found in the compost bin that was somehow growing. Um, I had thrown some seeds out that I didn't think germinated from some soil and found that one growing in the compost bin. So <laughs> I pulled it out and I'm not sure if it's going to make it or not, but it looks like it might be throwing some new leaves out. So we'll see. And then the last grow bed here is our tomatoes, um, the dwarf aroma tomatoes. And these are doing amazing. The, uh, I've got some leaf issues, and again, I've got some nutrient stuff. I know I've got some iron deficiencies because the pH still isn't quite low enough. But all in all, they're doing really well. Got quite a few flowers setting um, there in the back, and a bunch, of, a bunch of other flower clusters you can see starting everywhere. And so hopefully we'll get some tomatoes to start setting here pretty soon. Um, I'm excited to see how these will do and if I can keep them under control because they're already getting kind of tall and I don't have too much room to uh, move that light up. And then with these CFL bulbs, once you move the light up too high, you don't get any light down to the bottom of the plant. So we'll see see how that does. Um, as always, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate you guys watching. I know it's kind of a different video today. I've got uh, kind of a hodgepodge of different information and just more of a walkthrough and update type thing. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video anyway. And um, hit that thumbs up for me. I really appreciate it. Please throw some comments down below. Let me know what you think, uh, suggestions. Uh, um, um, share your experiences with what you're doing in your aquaponics system. I'd love to hear uh, what things are growing well for you and what types of things you do. Um, 
And uh, as always, you know, we'd love to have you follow along. So if this is your first time watching, hit subscribe and uh, follow along. We always do aquaponics updates as well as other sustainability projects and uh, lots of other uh, things going on in the, in the uh, little suburban homestead here. So uh, hit that subscribe button and follow along with us. And as always, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest. Uh, I'll put links to all those down below. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.